scientists have just created a new type or phase of matter. Just as we have solid, liquid, gas and plasma, we now have time crystals. The interesting thing about time crystals is that they break time translational symmetry. The basic idea of time translational symmetry is that a translation in time has no effect on physical laws. The laws of nature that apply today were the same in the past and will be the same in the future. Normal crystals have an atomic structure that repeats in three-dimensional space, but they are motionless because they are in equilibrium in their lowest energy state with no exchange of energy. The problem scientists had in creating time crystals is that there is no passage or flow of time in the subatomic world of quantum mechanics. Therefore, they had to create a quantum system that had a passage or flow of time. This was done by chaining together a line of ten ions or electrically charged atoms at their lowest energy state, known as the ground state. They then hit the line of ions with a laser adding photon energy, forcing them out of equilibrium. This forced the ions to become localized in a specific space with an oscillation or vibration that formed what could be measured as a period of time. Researchers then noticed something very odd and that was the system or time crystal was oscillating or vibrating with a repetition twice the period of the original laser that had started the oscillation. This could not occur in a normal system or crystal where the future is always based on the past. Time crystals do break time translational symmetry but they have a different type of symmetry called discrete time symmetry. This means within the separate reference frame of the experiment of the time crystal, if you shift forward or backwards in time in steps of exactly their period, they will return to the same state. Therefore, relative to the energy and oscillations of the time crystal, the symmetry has not been broken. The symmetry is only broken relative to the external laser that first started the oscillation. Scientists are using the term discrete time crystals to describe such a system. It has been said that a violation in time translational symmetry means that under certain conditions energy is not a conserved quantity and that the laws of nature themselves are variable with time. But I believe there is an alternative explanation and that our ability to create discrete time crystals highlights the structure of the dynamic process of energy exchange that forms a passage or continuum of time. Discrete time crystals form their own space-time geometry, forming their own future relative to their structure and the photon energy that was fed into the system. At the smallest scale of this process, the kinetic energy of the random fluctuations are represented by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, with the future unfolding photon by photon with the movement of positive and negative charge. We have a universal process with the future coming into existence with each new photon-electron coupling or dipole moment. The future is an emergent property unfolding relative to the energy and momentum of each object or individual. Discrete time crystals are just a distorted form of this process, forming subharmonic oscillations relative to their structure and the energy and momentum of the original laser.
At the most fundamental level, this is a process of symmetry, forming and breaking, that forms greater degrees of freedom for entropy or disorganization, and also greater degrees of freedom for the diversity and complexity of life. With the whole theory being explained by just one equation representing the dynamic geometry of this process. What makes this process difficult to comprehend is that higher temperatures we have a phase change of matter with the process unfolding at much larger scales in the form of plasma with charge being able to cover a large area of interstellar space this spherical geometry can even be seen in these images from the International Space Station with a candle flame in zero gravity naturally forming a sphere that is interacting with the environment on the two-dimensional surface of the sphere. In our everyday life, fire would take on the same spherical symmetry if the symmetry was not broken by this universal process of energy exchange that forms the potential for the ever-changing world of our everyday life, forming what we see and feel as the passage or continuum of time. In such a theory, the future is not based on total randomness. It is based on broken spherical symmetry, and this takes the form of the most beautiful geometrical shape with the Fibonacci spiral being visible almost everywhere in nature. In this theory, we see the Fibonacci spiral in plant life, not because of economy of growth, but because we have a universal process of symmetry forming and breaking. This is why the Fibonacci spiral can be seen in so many different ways that are totally unconnected. This is a very beautiful example, with a girl with wet hair flicking her head, and as the water comes off her hair, it forms a Fibonacci curve. The connection with all these Fibonacci spirals and curves is that they were all formed over a period of time. It is the continuum of space-time as a geometrical process of symmetry forming and breaking that forms a Fibonacci spiral. This can also explain why these spirals are never perfect. It is because they are formed out of broken spherical symmetry relative to the atoms of the periodic table. The positive one and the negative one represents the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. Therefore, we even have an objective reason for the start of the Fibonacci numbers, 0, 1, 1. In this theory, the mathematics of quantum mechanics represents the dynamic geometrical process that forms the passage of time with classical physics representing processes over a period of time, as in Newton's differential equations. In such a theory, the universe is a continuum with an uncertain future continuously unfolding relative to the atoms of the periodic table. Each one of the four fundamental forces has their own individual part to play in this process, and this is why they vary so greatly in magnitude and behavior. If we start with the electromagnetic force that is carried by the photon forming the movement of charge, creating the flow of electric and magnetic fields. In this theory, it is this interaction between the photons and the electron probability cloud of the atoms that form the ever-changing world of our everyday life that we see and feel as the passage or continuum of time. We have the spontaneous absorption and emission of light, with each photon oscillation or vibration only occurring once, but with the process of energy exchange as a whole forming a unique and uncertain future with the wave-particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons acting like the bits or zeros and ones of a computer, forming a blank canvas that we can interact with 
transforming the possible into the actual. This might sound very far-fetched, but the electromagnetic force is responsible for all macroscopic properties of the chemical elements, including all chemical bonding. The electromagnetic force is fundamental to cell life, with the build-up and organization of positive and negative charge relative to the membrane of each living cell. Also, all man-made devices using electric current, such as television, lasers and computers, rely on the principles of the electromagnetic force. For the electromagnetic force to form what we measure as a period of time relative to the atoms of the periodic table, we need another fundamental force and this comes in the form of the strong nuclear force, or interaction. The strong nuclear force holds matter together, being a short-range force that only works inside the atomic nucleus. This is just what we need if we have an interactive process relative to the electron probability cloud that surrounds the nucleus. In other theories, it can seem puzzling that there is no concept or flow of time in the subatomic world within the atoms that is governed by the strong nuclear force. But in this theory, nothing could be more logical, because the future is unfolding with each new photon-electron coupling or dipole moment in an interactive process that is unfolding outside the atomic nucleus and is relative to the electromagnetic force. In ancient Greece it was believed that the atoms were indestructible but now we know this is not so. Atoms that decay with an unstable atomic nucleus emitting radiation could represent a problem for a theory that says that the future is unfolding photon by photon relative to the atoms of the periodic table. But the weak nuclear force explains radioactive decay with some very unusual characteristics that can only really be understood as part of a logical process if what we see and feel as the continuum of time is formed by photon-electron interactions. It is impossible to predict when a particular atom will decay, regardless of how long the atom has existed. However, for a group of atoms, the group expected decay rate is characterized in what is called half-lives. The half-life represents a time after which half of the group's nuclei will have decayed. Mainstream physics has no objective or logical understanding of why we should have such a property as half-life when we are dealing with decaying atoms. But if time and the future itself is relative to the atoms interacting with electromagnetic radiation or light, it would be logical that probabilities are built into the process itself. Therefore, we can't predict the decay of an individual atom and only measure the half-life of a group of atoms. It is interesting that when we have an atom with an unstable atomic nucleus emitting radiation, there is the potential that the future will be relative to that radioactivity. This might be in the form of a potential cancer risk. I like to think that this represents the delicate symmetry of space and time that life is based upon being broken by the radiation. This idea is supported by the weak nuclear force being the only known interaction that does not conserve parity and violates CP symmetry. In this theory, the future is unfolding with the movement of charge, with matter-antimatter annihilation, representing a fundamental part of the process. 
the annihilation of the antimatter represents the past with perfect symmetry between positive and negative charge and between matter and antimatter it is this symmetry that is represented by cp symmetry that is broken by the radiation or radioactive decay of the weak force or interaction we could say that there is a mirror image between the future and the past at the moment of creation or at each dipo moment the three fundamental forces that have been explained so far the electromagnetic force the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force are all interactions that are carried by a quantum or an elementary particle the gravitational force is the odd one out and is modelled on a continuous classical field mainstream physics believes this is because the elementary particle that forms gravity has not yet been found but in this theory it is because gravity is not a real force at all it is only a secondary force to the electromagnetic force this idea is supported mathematically with electromagnetism and gravity sharing the inverse square law representing the geometry of this universal dynamic process every action creates a reaction and the inward force of gravity is a reaction to the outward momentum of photon energy with the movement of charge as a process of continuous energy exchange or continuous creation photon energy slows up the rate that time flows forming a vortex in space relative to the energy and momentum of each object mass will increase relative to this with the time dilation of Einstein's relativity being part of this universal process there is no action at a distance in this theory just as in Einstein's theory of general relativity the gravitational field propagates at the speed of light with the electric and magnetic fields within such a dynamic process we can think of electromagnetism as an interactive ether that moves relative to the earth therefore it would not show up in any experiment that was relative to the movement of the earth this process unites gravity with the other three fundamental forces within a universal process that is unfolding in just three dimensions with one variable in the form of time in such a theory the parallel universes of string theory are just future possibilities and opportunities in our one three-dimensional universe of continuous energy exchange continuous creation thanks for watching please share and subscribe it will help the promotion of this theory